Hello, church. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read nothing. But anyhow, I just wanted to come and bring this little message to you. Uh, it's only going to be covering four verses, so it probably won't take quite as long as some of the others. But uh, I appreciate you guys being there. God bless you. We've had safe travels. Leon's home safely, and we're so thankful for that. And I just wanted to take a moment and share a little bit of the end of, of chapter 3 of First Peter. And then we'll get into chapter 4 next week. I would like some feedback. If these are doing uh, any good for you, if, if you're starting to see some of the things that was going on, and just uh, continue to pray uh, for our church family and, and for those in need. We've got a lot of needs out there. Today we wrapped up the the little boy Malcolm who passed away. They had his celebration of life today. Leon and, and another pastor that the family knew from over in Albany uh, participated. And our church provided such a wonderful meal for him afterwards. It was all hot dogs because that was Malcolm's favorite. He loved hot dogs. Even his dog was there that he got in trouble with, you know. But um, it's it's all good, and, and I just wanted to take a moment. I didn't like the reflection that was coming off my glasses, so I took them off, and we'll just see how it goes. Uh, trying to get this going and, and keep it going so that we can keep in touch with each other. I would like some feedback if this is doing you any good or if we need to look at something different. And we can do a lot of things now that we're starting to learn and, and grow. Uh, very thankful that Leon's back. He's just been such a blessing. And it let, just to let you know in advance, uh, about the middle of the month, he's going to be headed back to Boise to get Noel all checked into school and and get everything done there and then take a couple of weeks and visit his family and Carol's family and just love up on people back there and, and that Idaho place. So that's that's where we're at. And it's it's been a wonderful day. God is so good and continues to bless our church. Uh, I just want to offer, offer a prayer for my little friend Malcolm. And if you join me in that, I'd appreciate it. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for Malcolm and the blessing he was to Mindy and and to her husband Nick and his little sister and, and the whole family and community, Father. I just thank you for that. We know that he is resting in peace with you and he's he's just, I'm sure, using that same vim and vigor that he had here up there and you'll have to have plenty of work for him to do, God. We just thank you, Father, for the blessings and the love and the certainty of eternal life in Christ Jesus. We offer this prayer in his name. Amen. Well, this is what it is, and we're just going to take it one day at a time and see what we can get done. Last week, we finished with a lot of talk about suffering, and the suffering was pretty powerful at one point there last week. Uh, George Wishart, I told you about him back in the 1500s. He was burned at the stake for preaching the gospel of Jesus. We have not even begun to suffer yet, folks. Nothing comparable. And we just need to remember that and just thank God for the blessings that we have. It was suffering according to God's will. And if we're suffering for doing good, the Apostle Peter said, then if it's, it's good. It's good and it's pleasing to God. And you endure. This is a precious sign uh, of God that, you know, you can handle it. And we can handle it, folks. We can handle it. It's, it's definitely a difficult time for us right now. Not being able to assemble together, that, that is a tough one. Because we're encouraged not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as some back then were in the habit of doing. 
But all the more as the day approaches. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you the day's approaching. But I'm not going to get into end time stuff because I think the only thing we need to remember is what Peter's reinforcing here. In Christ, we win. So we're just going to keep doing that and pushing ahead. And God's going to bless it as we serve him, love others, and follow Jesus. That's, that's our goal. Salvation. Christ suffered for our reconciliation. I'm going to be picking up in, in chapter one, or chapter 3 of 1 Peter, starting with the 18th verse, and I'm going to read through the end of the chapter, which is the 22nd verse. So I'm going to read that and discuss it a little bit, and then I'm going to let you go do your own thing. So <clears throat> here's what we got. Verse 18, For Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently. Keep that in mind. God's patient. He waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good, clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with the angels and authorities and the powers in submission to Him. See, folks? The whole thing about the end times, the whole thing about eternity, is that in Christ Jesus, we win. We're the victors in Him because He has conquered death. He has taken over and He is fully in control. In our lives, we may suffer. That's a part of being a part of Christ. And so we may be in for more, but it's up to God to bring us through in Christ Jesus. Now, in my humble opinion, which is very humble, thank you very much, verse 18 is the central theme, the main point of this entire chapter. Everything else hinges on the work of Christ. If Christ didn't die and suffer once for sins, our ability to live lives of submissive obedience is impossible and useless. We couldn't do it without knowing that. If Christ did not suffer once for sin, we have no righteous example of suffering. He is the perfect sufferer, sinless, the only sinless sufferer. The one who not only suffered in our place, but suffered in order that we might follow in his steps. That's why I continue to say, follow Jesus. If Christ did not die once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God, there is no victory to proclaim. There's no sinless Savior who died in our place to reign victoriously over sin. Satan and death. See, but it's the reality. He did. And we're in good shape and in good company, clinging to the righteousness of Christ Jesus. If I could ex exhort us to remember anything from chapter 3, it would be that verse 18. This is how it's put in the English Standard Version. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Oh, Lord, thank you, God, for the blessings you provide. Ah, oh, it's precious. Now, in remembering this verse, these truths we will always have, the truth of the gospel hidden in our heart. We need to own this. We need to claim it. 
It's ours in Christ Jesus. We can use this verse as a starting point for gospel proclamation, reminding others of the hope that in is, is in us with gentleness and respect, caring about others. Christ preached victoriously after the crucifixion. Christ provides salvation through the resurrection. Remember, we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. The Apostle Paul spelled it out very clearly in 2 Corinthians 5.18. All of this, Paul said, is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Do you realize what you've been called to? Do you realize what we have the potential to do in sharing this gospel message and this righteousness to others? Oh, folks, we need to be about that. We're going to be coming up here in, in a month and a half on September 11th. And it'll be a time when we can serve others and love them and show them how much we appreciate them. We're going to make an effort to invite Lebanon Police Department and State and Police Department and Lynn County Sheriff and all of our volunteers. We're going to invite Jefferson's volunteers. And we're going to have a, a great turnout. And, you know, we're making plans now and trying to get support for it within the community so that we can make this the biggest, best, most wonderful celebration of Jesus, love for others by serving those who serve us. So keep that in mind and be planning toward that. I would encourage you to continue giving. We have to meet our bills. We've got to make our payments. And just just keep giving. You've been doing great. Let's not let down. We're coming in for the final stretch. This COVID thing will be gone. We'll be back in church together, encouraging and building up one another for the days ahead. Oh, God bless you. I pray you guys do a great job, and we'll see you on the flip side. God bless. <laughs>